Congress of the United States, oh, wait. <laughs> when the Congress of the United States awards an American with this gold medal, and that American's contribution to his country must have been extraordinary to merit such an award. And in the case of Fred Waring, extraordinary is exactly the word to describe the man and his achievements. Fred has sometimes been described as the man who taught America how to sing. But even that description can begin to relate the impact his talent and his patriotism have had on American life and culture. Fred is a show business legend. He's been successful in movies, radio, recordings, Broadway, television, the concert stage, and I know he won't mind my mentioning the early days, in vaudeville. <laughs> <laughs> One of his first auditions was in 1920 for Thomas Edison. It began an extraordinary career that included recording thousands of songs and writing hundreds of songs himself. Besides his theme song, I Hear Music, he's also included dozens of patriotic songs like his beautiful My America. Fred's achievements in the choral music field are well known, of course, and it's only one reason why he's considered among America's most prominent music educators. He's still conducting a choral music workshop every summer to foster better singing and choral techniques. His accomplishments go on and on. I couldn't mention all the radio and television shows or the concerts. During the 60s and 70s, for example, he traveled more than 40,000 miles a year. In fact, next March, Fred will celebrate his 69th year in show business. That's a record virtually unequaled in the entertainment world. Fred, there isn't time to describe all your accomplishments and talents. Come to think of it, I haven't even mentioned the wearing blender. <laughs> <laughs> but let me put it this way. Through your hard work and success, Fred, you've had an extraordinary impact on our nation. You've always been generous with your time and talent when your country called. You've been a devoted father and husband. You've given to countless millions the thrill of good music and taught many thousands more the techniques of the musical arts. So today, on behalf of this nation, which you love so much, and the millions whose lives you've touched, I want to say what they would if they were here. I want to thank you and present you in honor of your patriotism, your talents, your generosity and kindness with this gold medal. beautiful land is America. What do I see in America? A free and marvelous country, like a great masterwork of art. What do I hear? I hear music of faith and of laughter and love pouring out from every heart. My America, true devotion I vow. Let me fly my flag and proclaim unashamedly here and now, I love you, America. I love you, I love you, America. So glorious, so marvelous, so beautiful. Indescribably beautiful. From sea to shining sea. I greet all of my dear friends from 
from, from California to Vermont, from Florida to Minnesota, <laughs> and my lovely family, five of whom are here. My inspiration, Virginia, has been quite ill and unable to join in, but she does send her love. Bless you all, again, thank you. Pleased with that, Mr. President. Uh, you know, it's 20 years ago that the U.S. took the initiative to develop that, shared its technology, and uh, I think we have 108 countries that are very appreciative. 108. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's not like UNESCO and the others. It, it works. <laughs> well, well, by golly, I do congratulate you. Thank you. Wish you well. Thank you. Why don't you move in? Why don't we get one Mr. More President? You know the. Um, the Soviet response to Intelsat is now only 13 nations large into Sputnik. So we have really uh, displayed, uh, through sharing, a, a, a technology superiority to them in this important area of satellites. Uh, that's great. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Super near. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thanks, Thanks Mr. Mr. President. Thank you again. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, listen. And Mr. President, Dr. Turner also. Oh, 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 program helping the blind, helping the handicapped out into jobs and to, and to work. And if Nancy were here, she'd say thanks for what you're doing in the field of drugs. Well, I wish she is here because I'd like to invite our good line, Mr. President, and his wife to be at the International Convention in San Francisco and allow me to present to her the humanitarian award this year Well, for Lions International. Well, when you were in Fort Smith, Arkansas, uh, there was an artist who painted a, a, a portrait of you. And this is her card. She sent you a big picture today of uh, the Arkansas wilderness. And it got broken in the airplane. We're going to try to have it repaired. But oh. she also sent this poem to you. And uh, uh, you saw her when you were making the trip in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Yes. She's a very renowned artist. And, she wanted to send that poem to you. And she sent a beautiful painting, and we just had a portion of it. Charcoal painting. We're going to see if we can get it repaired. Well, thank you. Some of the lines here will we'll, uh, deliver it if they do. Well, here's a pen as a souvenir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We would love to have you. And is that it? Yes, it'll be July the 7th. It's the last day of the meeting. Now, if you're down there, change the date. Uh, I'm flexible. I'll, I'll change the schedule a little bit and, and I'll uh, see that you can do it. Well, I will hope that I can because I relish anything that gets me back to California. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we have 40,000 people there. 
Oh, my goodness. And uh, that'll be the glare. Hello. Cheryl and Rick Well, it's nice to see you, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Appreciate you having us over here. It's quite an honor. Pleased to see you again. So, uh, yeah, it was a little while ago. I'd like to present you with this book that I did uh, about my experience in the hospital after I was wounded. And uh, thank you for your help with the Vietnam Veterans Leadership Program for your support, and uh, especially thanks for what you've done for us veterans. It's, uh, it's helped us bolster our, our, our ego a lot, especially knowing we have you behind us, especially disabled veterans. Well, I thank you very much, and I'm, I'm greatly honored. I think you've, you've made it evident that courage doesn't end when the battle stops. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's been that way for thousands of Americans up till this point in our, in our history. And, uh, I think some people have forgotten about it. Someone's been of great help to you and a great inspiration. An awful lot. He's given me a lot of stuff <laughs> too, though. Why don't we turn around here and get yes, it? Yes, yes. Just give me a good kick when I need it, especially, sir. Thank you, sir. And I appreciate it. Hope you get over to it and I can see you. Well, can't you? I'm very, very glad to meet you. Well, glad to meet you. And I brought you a small gift. I thought you probably needed some. I brought you some nanoseconds. Some what? Nanoseconds. That's how far light or electricity will travel in a billionth of a second. Well, thank you very much. And that's what gets into all our computers and messages and everything. That's why it takes so long. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I thought you really needed some. Well, no, then I know I'm going to have a chance in a moment to congratulate you. Something for the moment. After they happen. go away, I'd like to ask you this. Well, Not for me. All right. Well, can you help? Mr. President, how are you? I know we're here for a little ceremony. We have a little swearing in today, Mr. Yes. President. Let me put these down there. Okay. Okay. So just kind of stand what right I want to ask you to do is please make reference to the raise for the men who have killed the people. They should have gotten in October. It was delayed to January, and they died before they could get it. We'll yes. work that up with Cap. All right. He's due. We should have. Yes, yes, we should. Yes, we do. Hello there. This is Cap. Harper's family. My name is Mary. Her sister in law. This is Jennifer. Hello. 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 They wouldn't believe Jennifer in Wolfboro when she said she was coming here. <laughs> Jennifer was in Wolfboro in New Hampshire. Here you are. <laughs> we'll make sure that you have a yeah. picture to, to prove it to. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because your teacher didn't believe her. <laughs> well, Grace, if you could raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Grace Mary Hopper. I, Grace Mary Hopper. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office on which I am about to enter. Of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Now, congratulations. And these are good We got Get a picture of this. <laughs> because Jennifer's going to tell the future generations that she did. <laughs> <laughs> this, Mr. President, if you could present this to your commission. This is your commission. To yes, Commodore. Commodore. Uh, no, I won't call you Kevin, I'll call you Commodore. Thank you. 
Do you suppose my great grandfather, who was a rear admiral, is rolling over in his grave? <laughs> no, he's probably sitting up very proud. I don't think he I don't think he thought of women as officers in the Navy. Well, that was just the trouble of being born too soon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> very grateful. Well, thank you very much. Please have it take place here in this office. Thank you. Please, a little part. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Would you like to have a one family come in for a picture? Yeah, yeah. That'd be one. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> I know it'd be a good activity. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, Hello there. I'm uh, the editor. Very nice right. to meet you. Again. Congratulations to you all on a hundredth anniversary. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank good you. to have something in this office that's older than I am. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're thrilled to give you this bound volume and. Uh, we're delighted that you're sharing this celebration with us. And, it, and it's a unique issue, not only because it's our centennial, it's the only issue in our history that both the president and his son has an article in. And neither <laughs> needed much editing. So we think it's a first in journalism as well as for the journal. Thank you very much. We're really delighted. Yes, thank you very much. That's all going on behind you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll all share our bicentennial together. Is that a day? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, can we see the color of this project? Oh. My fellow Americans, in just a moment, we'll be lighting our national Christmas tree, continuing a wonderful tra tradition that was started by President Coolidge 60 years ago. I know there's a special feeling that we share when we push the button lighting up that tree. It's as if each one of those twinkling lights sends a new spirit of love, hope, and joy through the heart of America. And of course, the brightest light of all is the star of peace expressing our hopes and prayers for peace, for our families, our communities, our nation, and the world. On behalf of our fellow citizens, Nancy and I would like to thank all of you on the Ellipse who for, have given America such a beautiful Christmas present, the 1983 Pageant for Peace. Christmas is a time for giving, and as we reach out to family and friends, I hope we'll also open our hearts to those who are lonely and in need, citizens less fortunate than ourselves, brave soldiers working to preserve peace from the tip of Alaska to the shores of Lebanon to the DMZ in Korea, families maintaining a constant vigil for their missing in action, and millions forbidden the freedom to worship a God who so loved the world that he gave us the birth of the Christ child so that we might learn to love each other. I know they would welcome your expressions of love and support. Many stories have been written about Christmas. Charles Dickens' Carol is probably the most famous. Well, I'd like to read some lines from a favorite of mine called One Solitary Life, which describes for me the meaning of Christmas. It's the story of a man born of Jewish parents who grew up in an obscure village working in a carpenter shop until he was 30 and then for three years as a preacher. And as the story says, he never wrote a book, he never held an office, he never had a family, he never went to college, 
He never traveled 200 miles from the place where he was born. He never did one of the things that usually accompany greatness. While still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them denied him. He was turned over to his enemies. He went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed upon a cross between two thieves. While he was lying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property that he had on earth. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Nineteen wide centuries have come and gone, and today he's the centerpiece of much of the human race. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that were ever built, and all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon earth as powerfully as this one solitary life. I have always believed that the message of Jesus is one of hope and joy. I know there are those who recognize Christmas Day as the birthday of a great and good man, a wise teacher who gave us principles to live by. And then there are others of us who believe that he was the Son of God, that he was divine. If we live our lives for truth, for love, and for God, we never need be afraid. God will be with us, and he will be part of something much larger, much more powerful and enduring than any force here on earth. Now tonight, I have a very special person here with me to spread our Christmas joy. Her name is Amy Benham, and she comes all the way from Westport, Washington. Amy recently wrote the leaders of a public-spirited project named Make-A-Wish and said, the Christmas tree that lights up for our country must be seen all the way to heaven. I would wish so much to help the president turn on those Christmas lights. Well, Amy, the nicest Christmas present I could receive is helping you make your dream come true. When you press the button over here, we're going over there, the whole world will know that Amy Benham lit up the skies, sending America's love, hope, and joy all the way to heaven and making the angels sing. And now you and I will walk over so you can light the tree, and then after that's done, we'll all join in singing one of our favorite Christmas carols, Joy to the World. So let's go over here. 